All right, today's episode on Tequila Forever, Forever Tequila. I'm going to be doing a review on El Tesoro de Don Felipe Platinum, a.k.a. Blanco, Silver, Plata. It's all the same thing. Now, this is going to be one of those episodes where I say, stop collecting, start drinking. Stop collecting and start cracking these bottles open. Because that's what I'm about to do. Now, El Tesoro is a product that is currently still in production. Now, the reason I'm saying stop collecting, why this is one of those episodes, is because in 2018, they stopped making these olive oil bottles, right? That's what they call these olive oil bottles. And I believe that's when that newer style that you see today came out, right? It was this, that round one. Um, and it had that Tahona cap. And then recently, maybe about a year ago, or a few months ago, still the same design bottle. But the only thing that changed on it was the cap. So instead of the cap being a Tahona, I believe now it's a wooden cap. I don't know why, for whatever reason they changed it, but I really like that little Tahona cap. Um, you know, the lots in that one, I think it started again from like, you know, B1, B2. Right now it's probably like at B31 or something like that. This one here is lot B1115. And this was bottled February 9th, 2015. So this is about nine years old. Um, so even though, like I said, this is still in production, these olive oil bottles are not, and it's not the bottle that makes this tequila special. What makes it special the person who's is drinking it. the time that, you know, these agaves were harvested or the time that they started growing them. So I'll talk about that in just a minute. First, I just want to talk about... Um, you know, where this tequila is coming from, right? This is uh, NOM number 1134, that's La Alteña. And that's the distillery that was created back in 1937 by Don Felipe Camarena, which is the grandfather of Carlos Camarena. He is the master distiller of this tequila. You know, all the agaves, I believe they're grown to full maturity, which is like six to nine years. It's all Tahona, crushed, it's all Tahona stone. Um, they use a traditional oven stone, low temperature. I believe they cook it for like 48 hours, then it's cooled for a day. It's fermented in open wooden vats. Uh, they use natural yeast, you know, small copper still pots. Uh, they never water down their products for agave flavor. They distill right at proof, so that's actually a really good thing. Um, yeah, so they do things right. in doing the things, you know, the way they were done, long time ago, I think over 80 years ago, right? With his grandfather, the way he did things. So in an interview that I watched um, with Carlos Camarena, he was talking about, you know, how every single, you know, batch is special, especially, you know, because of weather, of the weather of climate, right? It could be if a year was really dry, or if it was really wet, you know, if it was harvest, you know, during the winter, during the summer, all those kind of things are going to affect, you know, the way, you know, the ultimate product tastes like. So every batch is unique because of that reason. So even though it's the same product made the same way, they can be slightly different. It can be just a little bit different or it can be completely different. And the way I'm looking at this is not just that it was bottled in 2015, right? If we went back to what they say six to nine years for the agaves, right? So then we're going back to like the early, you know, 2000s, right? So we're 2000, you know, seven, 2008, somewhere around that time that the agaves were planted and then later harvested, right? In 2015. So we're talking about a different climate at that time. You know, we don't, we a lot of times have the same similar climate, but all that stuff can make a difference. You know, it's the same thing when I had did the uh, Corazon Expresiones, right? They talk about the terroir. 
or is the, you know, the environment, right? The climate, the dirt, all those kind of things, you know, play an effect, right? So a little water, a lot of water, a lot of rainwater, all that stuff makes a difference. So that's what makes this, you know, tequila different, special. They called it platinum back then, but it's the same thing. I think in uh, Tequila Matchmaker, they have it like separately for whatever reason, including like the, the white labels and all that. And before I get this uh, cracked open, let's see. Don Felipe's treasure, El Tesoro Platinum de Don Felipe is a true work of art. It is the only tequila still produced entirely in old traditional method by hand. Don Felipe personally walks his fields and selects the agave plants for maturity and quality. He is very proud that his El Tesoro Platinum Tequila maintains and ensures the agave plant. It is a rare tequila that remains true to its source, yet the crystal clear with extraordinary smooth taste. No finer tequila is produced elsewhere. Enjoy Don Felipe's treasure. So this tequila is artesanal, you know, small batch. And like I said, you're not gonna find consistency in small batches. There could be just a slight change in flavor and you know, not like there's a lot of these big, big producers of tequila that use uh, additives or they use, um, you know, diffusers and other crap that they add to it that they always have consistent, you know, aromas and flavors. And uh, I'll, I'll try to post some closer pictures and stuff too. A little dusty right there. You guys can see that. It must be uh, Don Felipe. It's the front of the bottle. So let's get this open. So this is artificial uh, cork. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's get this a little. swirl and I'm looking at it right here this is really holding on to the glass it is crystal clear I mean this thing looks looks really really good mm. it also smells really good and I gotta tell you guys not the first time that I had this tequila. I think this is like my second or third bottle perhaps. And I have tried the current one. I think the one that I tried was probably, you know, batch uh, 25, I think. You know, it was with that rounder one with that wooden cap. Um, and they smell completely different. Completely different. Made exactly the same way as the same product. You know, and I was actually surprised because I think when I when I the first one I ever tried was this one, and then later I tried the other one and I was like, whoa, this is completely different, you know, and everything. And unfortunately, I I, I didn't get to do like a blind taste, you know, I, and that's what I originally wanted to do was to have, you know what I mean, the 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 newer bottle and this older one, and do it at the same time before I tried, you know either of them, but it didn't happen that way. Okay, so on the nose, what I'm picking up on this one is nice cooked agave. I'm picking up a nice. Some cinnamon. Minerals. It's a little bit of a, a floralness to it. You know, this is earthy. There's a fruit in there. 
Let me see. I'm also picking up a little bit like a sweet papaya. I think I mentioned cinnamon, I don't remember, but I'm also getting some cinnamon in there. Yeah, but it, it's, it smells it smells good, you know, and compared to the other one, I don't remember all the aromas and flavors that I picked up on the other one, but I, but I do remember picking up, um, you know, some, some like spiciness, some pepper, there was like minerality, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe like some, some olives in there. Um, you know, I, it's just completely different, you know, if, if, if I were to do a blind taste on this, I would have been like, man, this is not even the same product. Mm. So that's the first step of the day, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge it, you know, based on that. So, mm. it has a really nice. A really nice mouthfeel to it. You know, it's a bit, um, you know, it, it's it's oily. You know, it's it's it's, uh, it's silky, like buttery, but it's not like thick or nothing like that. So it has a good mouthfeel to it. Mm. All right, so what I'm picking up on the flavors, I'm, I'm getting like, I'm getting cantaloupe. I'm getting the nice sweet cooked agave. I'm getting the cinnamon. I'm getting some papaya in there. Hey, I'm picking up some mint and anise flavors. Picking up, I think I mentioned uh, like minerals. I'm also picking up a little bit of like, like a, it's like you can taste it like if it was like a, you know, like a wet concrete. I don't know if you guys have worked with like fresh concrete or, you know, wet concrete, right? When you smell it, it has like that certain aroma. I feel that like I can taste it in the mouth as well. And there is like some pumpkin. And that's about it. You know, so I would say that this tequila is good. I like it. I think if I would rate this tequila, I would rate this, um, shit. Man. Mm. What? There's a little bit of smoke in there too. There's some smoke. <laughs> I was getting something and I was like, you know, I'm gonna have another sip before I rate it. Yeah. Mm. There is smoke in there too. Especially towards the finish, you can pick up that smoke a little bit more. So it's a really good tequila. I'm gonna rate this. Um, I'm gonna rate this tequila 88. I'm gonna rate this one 88, which is I think just a point higher than I rated the other one. Um, you know, completely different products, completely different products. So. You know, I don't want to say another blast from the past because we just went back to when it used to be good because they're both good products. You know, and like I said, everything's made exactly the same way from my understanding. It just might have been the climate back at that time. You know, might have been the time that were harvest. Maybe they got less water, more water. Maybe something was different, you know, to our mix different. So um, if you got these bottles, you know, because I, when, I, when, I, when I first got this, got a few. There's some people that... Um, 
They got these bottles for it as well. They don't want to open them. And some people that I know that have them, they don't want to open them. They don't want to drink them. They want to collect them because they're like, oh, they don't make these anymore. The fuck how are you going to know what they're about? That's why I watching your video. Stop collecting and start drinking. Stop collecting. And stop and start cracking these bottles open. Because the only way you're going to know what they're about is to try them out yourself. I'm telling you, different, different product. It's not even the same. So, you know, it's worth trying. I'm, I'm curious about other batches now on um, El Tesoro. You know, so I know I tried the B25. I found recently a, a, an 18 or 19. So I'm curious to know like if those two would taste similar or if they would be completely different as well. You know, because from this time, from 2015, you know, the lot on this one, like I says, 1,115. You know, it's bottled back in 2015, uh, February 9th. So, different products, you know. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. Maybe you can look forward to a video on the new stuff later in the future. And salute.